Hello everyone, welcome to Cleaning the Litter Box and today Dr. Fluffy is talking about Portugal and his fight against rape culture. Yes, it's here. Barry once made a couple of videos about a TEDx talk that created a situation about a girl named Sarah and a boy named Brad. They both got drunk, they had drunken sanks, Sarah didn't remember some of the things of the night and then a couple of days later she decided that she got raped. At the time, the debate was whether it was enough to, to consider that story and the evidence that we had that it was a rape or if it was just drunk sex and then people attacked Baring saying he didn't understand consent. There was a lot of back and forth with people like Christy Winters and all of those people. And it was an interesting case scenario. And today I'm going to bring you a real life style of Brad Sarah's story from my country that is bringing a shit storm on the media and in social media and is even beginning protests of rape culture. Rape is a very serious issue and is for, in my opinion one of the worst crimes someone can commit and I'm actually of the opinion that sentences should be much harsher on rape than they currently are. I actually think rapists, regardless of gender, should be castrated. But of course the more serious the crime, the more evidence you should have to prove it because you don't want to be screwing up the life of innocent people. That should be obvious. So yes, I do believe rape should have harsher sentences, but let's not start witch hunts. Now of course to understand rape and to properly talk about rape, we need to define what rape actually is. So rape is a specific type of sexual assault that involves sexual intercourse or sexual penetration in terms of sexual organs. So it's basically forced Sex, sex, you know, with, with both genitalia. It's a bit different then. Now sexual assault is different. It's not just encompassing rape. Rape is just a form of sexual assault. Then you have other forms of sexual assault like fondling and uh, touching without consent and attempted rape. Some of these are not as serious as rape. Distinctions are important here. So you can be guilty of, for example, a type of molestation or uh, touching without consent but not rape. And this is important to understand the differences between both of these cases. In Portugal, students before exams get a week off where they have concerts. Every university has one week like this and they're called Kemas, Semana de Kema. And uh, during this week, Students get drunk as hell and do parties and it's crazy. So much alcohol. Unfortunately, these normally are good things, good weeks, but sometimes shit happens. Like violence, uh, suicides, uh, you know, drunk people. When you have so many drunk people, somebody's going to fuck up. Sometimes also bad people take advantage of students being that drunk to assault them and to be violent against them and to make shit because some people just want to get violent and fuck things. When I saw the headline, girl is filmed and abused in Porto and nobody does nothing and I was like, fuck, they fucked it up again, that's terrible, oh my god, I immediately, you know, I got like very sick, sickened by the thing. And I didn't watch the video because I didn't want to watch somebody get raped. Because bad things happen in sometimes in these weeks, I didn't question the news. But then more people in social media were sharing this story and they were speaking out against it, like saying that this is not a rape, what are you guys talking about? You're sensationalizing what happened, you're using this as propaganda, People were really attacking this, and girls too, it was not just guys. Spe actually, I saw, I think, more girls speaking out against this than guys. So I became a little bit more curious and a little bit more skeptical. And then somebody shared this headline saying, oh, it's rich Portugal. So it reads, protests at Porto, Braga and Lisbon against rape culture. I was like, oh, fuck. So one case of rape immediately equals rape culture. Immediately I started getting mad and then I continued to read this article. The slogan is, you mess with one of us, you mess with us all, 
no to rape culture. And I was like, okay, so what's going on? Oh, it's because of the video uh, from the Porto thing. So I went in investigation mode and I continued to read this article before I started searching more articles about it. So the organizer of the process says that it's seen as normal that a video like this with an aggression of this magnitude and people do not understand how violent it is for all women to spread this video. And I agree that the video should not have been spread, but not really by the reasons that she thinks and that she defends it. But um, we're going to get there later. She also has. It's unfortunate that these things are normalized, but we should not forget that it can happen to any one of us to be in that video. And that's why we cannot let it go and punish. Doing a loose translation, guys, but it is what it says. Put it on Google Translator, it, you'll get something very similar. She adds, rape culture is the one that sees a woman as a sexual object for the consumption of males. And it's the common understanding that women are not self-determined and owners of their sexuality. Does this seem familiar to any of you? Doesn't this seem like you guys, you Americans, send this to us? <sighs> God damn it. Wait, because there's more. The event is organized by the Feminist Association Anti-Racist of the Defenses of the Rights of LGBT and Social Movements. Uh, and then there's like a, a bunch of things that they did, like uh, the Women's March and uh, Stop Machismo. Manliness, I don't know. Uh, construct equality. This is, is, this is the same thing. This is the same thing as the feminism in America. You know, this is the same cancer. So at this moment, I started really thinking hard, is this true or not? Was there a rape or not, or is this just propaganda? I was having a hard time finding the original publication, but I started finding other publications. And apparently there's like a big backlash against the original publication because they published the video without even blurring the girl's face. So you could see everything that happened during that period of time. But before we get into that, for this was the first thing that I found. It was like saying, sexual abuse in Porto young girl was identified but did not press charges and this is a very important thing to me and it, it made me think even harder so she was identified everybody in the country saw what happened so she had massive support if she wanted to press charges but she didn't and like it was in a buzz full of people and uh, no witnesses are being open to talking about this? This is really weird. What's going on here? So the article goes further and says that the police has identified the young girl, but she decided not to press any charges. Not only, and then they very sneakily say here that it's an alleged rape in the bus from Porto. Before they were not doing anything about alleged, but in the middle of the article they said oh, alleged. And then they say that she's of course of age, so she's uh, over 18 years old, and that she has not done any complaint from the footage being shown and from the rape, the supposed rape. Then they, they go on to say that the police are investigating. It's not I think this site that says that they are investigating because of an uh, email they got, not because the girl made any complaint, not because any friend of the girl made any complaint, because they got an email from an anonymous source or something like that uh, with the video. So they are investigating, but they cannot do anything like more technical because even though this is a, a public crime, they, um, there's no complaint made by a supposed victim. Now they also say that this has begun like a big shitstorm with uh, some regulated companies basically attacking the news publication and correctly so that they published the video 
because they didn't even censor the young girl's face. But the reason that they did so is a bit iffy because it is because it's visible the alleged sexual abuse of a young girl. Okay, but I can agree that they, they shouldn't do that. If you have the evidence, the evidence should have gone to the police, not been published to the newspaper, especially with that headline, immediately calling this a sexual abuse. Now, at this point, I still hadn't watched the video. I only had the opinions of people in social media and what the news was saying and what the accusations were from the news. And then I finally found the original publication with the video. Now, they changed the video a bit to kind of censor it a bit. And I managed to watch it. And what the fuck are you talking about rape? N to be fair, s they go back and forth. Like sometimes they use the sexual abuse word. Sometimes they say alleged raped. They mix both wordings together to try to trick people into associating this with rape. But it could never be a rape because there's no intercourse. Both people are clothed. And what you actually see is two people in a bus in the end of the night, so it's already morning actually, after the concert, completely wasted. She's laying down in the seats, he's grabbing her, they are kissing, she's grabbing him by the hair, so she's actually pushing his head to her while they're kissing, and he's with his hand on her genital parts, but they're both clothed, so you don't actually even see the genitals, you just see that he's fondling her while they're kissing. Piss, poor, drunk. The bus is full of people. There's girls next to them. There's the guy filming. There's guys incentivating the thing. And when the yeah, girls like saying, oh, disgusting. You can see that there is enough people there, enough witnesses to say like, if this was a sexual assault, somebody would have done so. I don't believe in the dozens of people there there wouldn't be a decent human being that would intervene if a girl was being molested and sexually assaulted in a crowded bus in plain daylight. This seems like kids being too drunk and being indecent in public making out. They are probably had been making out all night and a lot of people that were there probably knew that and that's why they were incentivizing because probably they thought, oh, they are happy because they're making out. Like, you see, it's like one minute or something of video. And then after it, she just gets up on her own. She doesn't have to push him. She doesn't have to do anything violent. She just gets up, walks a little bit uh, behind him, and, and just stay, stands there. Now, you can see that she's clearly very drunk. Very drunk. But she doesn't seem like she was not okay with it she doesn't seem like uh, a victim of anything there's not a single reaction that would seem like this was a sexual assault at all from her from the guy from anybody in the video the video is in one of the links the links are all in the description so i am not holding anything back so anyone can reach their own conclusion the police is investigating so we can find new evidence and maybe she was actually sexually assaulted and, and so she should get justice and uh, the guy should pay for what he did. But again, this was not a rape, sexual assault, different things. And for now, I don't see it. I just don't see it. The way journalists handle this was terrible. This could be considered in the end defamation it was terrible they completely put this girl in a terrible position they did this attack without any evidence without checking the facts out of time so regardless of how this turns up it's a terrible situation you have a girl that was abused in a public bus and nobody did anything or you have an innocent guy that is being blamed for all of this and is being vilified Either way, the girl is in a terrible situation because she was either abused or is being exposed with this drunk, terrible night she had. Give me your opinion. Let's talk about this because these situations are about to increase more and more with the way the media is portraying everything these days. Uh, thank you for watching. Stay fluffy.